months, I was awake. And it makes me realize that we all have access to these other levels of reality, which Bill Tiller um, has demonstrated through his scientific research, that if we couple with what he calls the etheric level, the magnetic information wave level, um, we are capable of amazing, amazing miracles. Well, we sure are. This awakening that you have, what has this taught you about our own existence? Who are we? What are we even um, doing here, Hazel? Okay, we are part of God, and all parts make the whole. I have come to the conclusion that we exist inside an incredible mind that some people would call God. And I believe that consciousness is learning and growing in capability and it's expanding. Consciousness is experiencing itself at every level of being. And we are part of that. And Tiller said to me, he said that humanity and consciousness has now decohered because he called God pure coherence. He said, in the beginning, all levels of energy were one. In the beginning, everything was totally coherent, which is what God is. In physics, they term it being in phase. Um, but he says there can only be stability in a dynamic state of change. And so we're part of that dynamic state of change. So we are here to grow in consciousness, to learn who we truly are, become who we truly are, and then help others with this process so that we can all become enlightened. Well, I've got to tell you, Hazel, it's, it's, a, it's a quest all of us are on, all of us all the time. By the way, you mentioned something uh, kind of funny when you said you hope someone's listening to you. Did they tell you how many radio stations you're on tonight on this interview? Um, I gather it's quite a lot of people. Yes, millions, millions. Oh, wow, wow. So we, we're going to open up the phone lines next hour for you so you will find out. Indeed. Now, tell me a little bit about your 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 mission here. Now that this has happened to you, you're trying to get the word out to everybody. Well, I'm I'm trying not only to get the word out, but I'm trying to get so much information out to people because Deepak Chopra. I remember you. I know that you must have heard of Dr. Deepak oh, yeah. Chopra. He's, remember, he's been on the show. I remember going to one of his lectures many many years ago, and he said he explained that we were all one. And I really, really didn't get it. But in, after going through what I went through and after speaking to these scientists, like, for example, um, at the moment of the Big Bang, which, by the way, wasn't very big at all. Um, it Let, was let's let's, let's a, come back for that. Hold on, Hazel. We're going to take this break, and we'll be back with you in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. With our special guest for the next hour and a half, we are talking with Hazel Courtney, her work. Countdown to Coherence, a spiritual journey toward a scientific theory of everything. We're going to get into some of this when we come back on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. We're with Hazel Courtney. Hazel, you were talking about the Big Bang or the lack of a Big Bang. I'll let you pick that up from there. Go ahead. All right. Well, what happened was many years ago, Deepak Chopra said to me, you know, that we're all one, that we're all linked. He said that you could have atoms within your body now that were once inside Buddha or Jesus. And I just didn't get it. I thought, this is such woo-woo stuff. <laughs> um, and, and then I eventually learned, of course, that when at the moment of the Big Bang, which wasn't big at all, our universe began, when our universe began and when our space and time were, were birthed, um, our universe was less than the size of an atom, and a million atoms would fit behind one of your hairs now. And so then, about 380,000 years down the line, then as atoms began to be formed, and eventually, of course, millions and millions of years later, we came along, we were all birthed from one source. Um, all, all the energy that ever was or will be was birthed in that moment. And atoms, which are the fundamental unit of matter in this universe, are everywhere. And therefore, indeed, atoms that were once inside Buddha or Mohammed or whoever, 
um, could now be inside you or anyone out there listening. So ultimately, we are all from one source. We are all part of one source. Uh, we just, most people just don't think about that too often. Um, so ultimately, when you think ill of another person, or, uh, you're basically at a much higher level. You're thinking ill of your ultimate self. What you give out is what you get back. You know, sometimes by 10, if it's negative. I've, That's I've, true. Yeah. It, for some reason, you know, the old saying about karma, but for some reason, if you send out evil thoughts to someone or, you know, you just think negatively, it comes back to you by 10. It's it's really unbelievable. I don't know why it, or how, but it does. Okay. Well, Hiller explains it to me. Obviously, you know terribly well, and I know all your listeners know about energy fields, but we sure. all have about 40,000 thoughts a day. And so when you start to look at um, what the majority of those thoughts are about, then those thoughts attach themselves uh, on what Tiller calls your, your individual grid, uh, which is like a scaffold around your body. And, um, and then we have a, like a community grid, a country grid, and a world grid. And sustained, focused intentions will um, stick onto this grid. And therefore, if you want to change what's in your life, you have to stop giving energy to what you don't want and let those things uh, just dissipate from your grid. And then you need to start giving more energy to what you do want in your life, which will then attach to your grid and then come back to you. So the more all of us can start thinking, as JFK once famously said, do not think what your country can do for you, more think what you can do for your country. But now we have to say, you know, instead of saying what's in it for me, what can I do to help humanity? And the more you think like that, the more you put your ego into service for the good of the whole, then, boy, great things start to flow into your life. Are you still on a mission now to find scientists who can help you explain what the heck is going on? Well, I think I've come, because I've written three books now. It's like a trilogy of books, and I, I, it's an ongoing journey. We're all here to learn and to grow from the experience. And so I feel like I've learned a huge amount in the last 10 years, and maybe one day I might write yet another spiritual book, but I'm now 62, so I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but I hope I've still got quite a way to go. But um Yes, I'm, I'm always on the lookout for new and interesting and validated information that can help people to grow in coherence and, and to help everyone reach their full potential because we are all capable of so much more than we can even begin to fathom. Do you believe in God, Hazel? I don't think that any of us at our current level of coherence, are anywhere near conscious enough to know what God is. But yes, I believe that there is an ultimate something. Well, when I was online to it, I believe that there's an underlying field of intelligence that underlies all of life, and I believe that we exist inside this mind. And so some people call it God. Gary Schwartz calls it the a grand organizing designer. But yes, I believe that there is some huge consciousness out there that is truly beyond our comprehension to understand. But at its core, I believe that it is pure, unconditional love. Love. Well, oh, you with us? Well, we lost Courtney, Tom, so call her back. And uh, we will get her back in just a second right here on Coast to Coast AM. If we lose her, well, we'll continue with our uh, open lines. We're talking about her book. It's called Countdown to Coherence. And uh, this is just about her life story and some of the things that have happened to her and uh, what's out there, how creative life can be if you somehow tap into that, if you get into that mix. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things she's going to do. I'm going to give you the phone numbers just in case she doesn't come by, because we may end up having to do open lines for the rest of the night. West of the Rockies, oh, she's back. 
So, Dan, Dan you uh, punch her up for me. And here she is. Hazel, you with us? Yes. What happened there? I don't know. You just disappeared. No, well, you've been bumping your phone, though, all night, you know, because I've been hearing little beeps coming from your phone. So really? Maybe, maybe you accidentally disconnected yourself. No, no. No, I'm just sitting here chatting away about God. Okay, let's get back into God. So uh, you, were, you were mentioning what Gary Schwartz thinks. Well, Gary said it's sort of some grand organizing designer, and some people say God is some kind of E.T. But to my mind, when I and my mother, father, God became as one, when I was going through my experience all those years ago, it really is beyond physical words to explain, other than that, to my mind, it's a consciousness that contains everything. I became everything and nothing. It's, I just was. It's an isness. It really is hard to put into words, but it's like it's neutral. It's neither good, bad, light, dark, whatever. It, it contains everything, but at its core, it's just total isness. And I think it will be quite a long time before humanity really understands what God is. But Dr. Michal Ledwith, who's the theologian who starred in the film What the Bleak Do We Know, when I asked him uh, what God is, he said, God is a verb, not a noun. And when you really, really start to think about this, um, you realize that you really are part of God and that all parts make the whole. Part of you is already linked to what I call the divine. And Killer has shown that your acupuncture meridian energy system and your chakras are already functioning at a coherent state of being. So part of you is already enlightened, but most people just don't acknowledge that and don't recognize it. What do you think is out there? Let's, let's just take, and it's very difficult to take God out of the equation. But let's talk about what's out there in the universe that intertwines all of this, Hazel, that makes it work. Uh, And it might be in multi-universes now. They may be all over the place. What the heck is it? Or or maybe maybe we can't explain it without mentioning this divine intelligence. As I said earlier, I really don't think we're coherent enough to explain it. But as long as people understand that whatever intelligence formed this universe. I mean, Michu Kaku now states very openly that whatever it was that formed this universe um, has the intelligence to birth multiple universes. So the ultimate who you are um, is exists at all levels of time in all dimensions simultaneously. So part of you, the ultimate part of you that people call God, is everywhere. And when I spoke to Tiller, he explained to me, this is the way he explained it to me. He said, first of all, you have this core of pure coherence. And to grow in awareness, it decoheres over great millennia of time. And so he said, as it started decohering, it formed... um, There were non-physical societies that began to form at the level of mind, and these would have been societies such as Mu. And then as the the coherence carried on decohering, it would have then formed other levels of reality at the level of the emotion domain. And then it would have, uh, they would have been something like Lemuria. And then they would have gone on, they're still non-physical societies, would have gone on to form something like Uh, the Atlantean society, who would have literally intended that for consciousness consciousness to more fully explore itself, they could have intended this reality into being. And for anyone out there who thinks, my God, this is complete madness, Michu Kaku, the theoretical physicist, says that to um, make a universe like ours would take a very minuscule amount of matter, as little as a net ounce. So when you start consider that 